Picks for a long time. That's why picks and bands could be really juicy. Speculation is fun, gentlemen, but we are now at the point where it will no longer be required. We're into picks and bands now for this bout between the Freaks and G2 Esports. Let's see how the bands go down as Afrika is going to make sure they get rid of Urgot, Irelia, and Akali. A lot of solo lane focus early on here as Tom Kench, Olaf, and Aatrox are the bands from G2. And we've seen Zaya first pick twice already in this tournament when she was left open, so you try and get the Zyra Khan combination for yourself. But if the Afrika Freaks were ever going to be focused on that, Rakan was the champion for Tucson to prelm to so many MVPs. Heimer's open. MVP. It is open. We'll see if they actually go there. We saw one Heimer oh, game baby. in Korea. In fact, at the highest level, Heimer has never won in the LCK. And all the European fans, they know why we get excited when we see Heimer open for G2 Esports. It is Jarnan's special pick. He's, a, he's basically a, a Heimer one trick from solo queue. That being said, I don't think you have to take it just because it's left open, especially right. when you see like an Alistar, you can get scared of a potential all-ins. Zyra Khan is here for G2, and it's something they started picking up towards the end of the split and could use in the gauntlet very successfully. And we should talk a little bit about the oh, they, do it anyway. they got it in there. All right, Heimer doing it, and Rakan, <laughs> that's an interesting hodgepodge lane. <laughs> we were speculating, Deficio, in the back that the first pick Zayas was to force out Rakan and weaker lanes. This is Rakan and one of those majors the Afrika Freaks were actually famous for. They weren't playing the Heimer, but they were a Vladimir team. We had a lot of Swain coming through from Kramer. Are they gonna go for standard marksman, or we just get a lot of mages in this game. Well, we're seeing yet another mage come in as the Talia is picked up there for Afrika. They're also going to grab Kaisa before she swooped up. A very popular pick so far throughout the play-in stage of the tournament was vastly the number one pick. Was vastly in the lead, I should yeah. say, in terms of picks for AD carry. 26 plays on that one. And we are going to get opposites when it comes to the two marksmen or the two AD carries in the bottom lane because Jan specifically is all about early push with Heimerdinger. Kais is all about scaling towards the late game. You have all in potential with the Alistar, but Heimer normally will run with stopwatch and then it gets really scary if you're trying to all in him and he has to turret down. This Camille, however, most likely will go to Jankos in the jungle. And that is one of the picks where he can actually gank in the early game, and that's when he shines. Interesting observation, though. Even though Spirit has played a lot of unique junglers, he has not played a single game of Talia jungle in summer. Now, this could be a mid lane pick. Koro has played yep. it many times, and we've talked about it a couple times in drop. Still a potential of a flex pick. Aurelia banned in the first round, a famous pick into that Talia. I also wanted to mention, we lost track of this, Aurelia top is actually a bigger and bigger thing in solo queue recently, and I imagine scrims as well. So there were a lot of top lane focused picks, and so far the Camille could loom as a top laner, but nothing else locked in. Exactly, and the fact that both top laners are still sitting here without a pick is exciting for the next phase, because we are looking at potential carry versus carry on that side. G2 can save last pick for Wonder. Grab a blind pick, something like a Syndra for perks, and then be ready for what Keen picks. I would love to see the Syndra blind pick because the big pick for Kuro was Yasuo in the regular season and playoffs banned frequently. We see over in the LPL, Rookie can win that matchup. But in the past, it has been considered a counter pick to the Syndra, a skill matchup in a skill game. Plus, when you've already got Kaisa as an AD carry, you know that she can do heavy magic damage. Yep. You're not going to hurt the composition if you go for an Two AD mid laner. Well. There we go. And now we're we going to see that Syndra blind picked by G2. Mid lane, heavily focused. Second part of the band, LeBlanc, Rise, Galio, Velkoz, as now it's up to Afrika to make the next You either game. give up early game and go for Banshee Veil Rush on the Talia, or you go for a pick into that Syndra. The Scion doesn't necessarily tell us anything, although we just had a mid lane Scion game into Syndra. Outside chance, Kuro will return to a pick he's played before. Big in the LPL earlier, so in the LCK earlier in the year, in spring of this year. We will see the Scion locked in, and Afrika Freaks still a lot of ambiguity about when we're finally going to find out just who is going the mid lane for this roster. And then we finally also get to see what Wonder will play top lane. Does he just grab a tank for himself? I would be surprised if he did, especially with the Heimerdinger bot, because he would like to just leave it Heimerdinger alone and then play heavy towards the top side of the map. Zoe comes in, though, from uh, Kuro here. The most played champion for Kuro. You talk about how he has this wide assortment of champions he likes to pick from. Well, this is the one he relies on the most. 12 plays on that throughout the regular summer split there in the LCK. You can see there, so far, not putting up the most impressive stats at Worlds, but Kuro looks to change that. 
Let's see where G2 want their win, because they could just put the Camille on the top side. It is yeah. a bit of a flex pick, but it looks like Camille top, Gragas jungle. We'll get that confirmation at 20 seconds, then just try to make sense of all this. Certainly going to be so interesting to see if a Korean team will go down to this so far undefeated 7-0 and zero Heimerding. I mean, they are currently giving G2 the kind of dream setup for themselves. They yeah. want to have a draft where Wonder gets counter pick and he gets to be on a carry that can outscale. And then they want, ideally, Yannan on something where he can sit alone in his lane and just be super, super safe. And that is what his Heimerdinger can do. The thing about Camille top lane, however, I don't feel like Scion early game is going to struggle too much against this. Like, this is very much like give him a couple of items for Wonder. So when I say counter pick here, I mean at least last pick for him and not necessarily stomp the laning phase. Now, on the red side, there are some priority lanes here potentially to be played through where there is a push advantage on the side of G2. However, very reliable CC in the Afrika lanes and a Talia jungle. Spirit's debut in professional play on this Talia. If you look at his solo queue account, he's played everything and then some. So he's definitely going to be practiced and in form on this pick. Very, very true, but I just want to see what Wadid can also do here. I think his player's performance on Engage Champs were very hit or miss. And he's actually very important for this team when it comes to forcing engages. That's why he's on Rakan, even though it doesn't really fit with the Heimerdinger that well, unless you want to have a kill lane. Well, the one thing about the Heimerdinger when you're talking about it with the Rakan, remember that the combo that was used so much with Heimerdinger previously was Fiddlesticks. You yep. could always see the exactly. two chosen together because point-and-click hard CC sets up the grenade, sets up the turrets, and if Rakan goes in with the ultimate into the knockup, you can throw a grenade on that pretty easily. The what-ifs are certainly there, Captain Flowers. We don't need to speculate. We get some in-game action to talk about. Oh, baby, here we go on to Summoner's Rift now for the fourth time today. It's the Afrika Freaks in the blue corner versus G2 Esports in the red. Let's see how they decide to play this one out. Very normal here at the start. Everybody approaching the line of scrimmage, protecting those entrances into the jungle. And I really want to see what happens between Yankos and Spirit. We talked about this already coming into the game. The two guys who played for so many years. Spirit's playoff run was amazing. Yankos in the gauntlet here in Europe after struggling during the summer split, after Funnel got nerfed. He actually managed to step up and become a huge early game carry again, which was important. And even more micro-focused, it was all about Afrika beating Talia jungle players. We saw Ambition play Talia, get run over by the Olaf pick that came through from Spirit. He also was taking down Peanut on this Talia pick. Now he's actually the one playing it. He's against the Gragas with Predator. Definitely in the early levels, before the Predator's even online, before the mm -hmm. boots are picked up, Talia can already get going as early as level two. But I want to see if Yankus puts his focus mid lane first and not actually top. I think Zoe is such an easy target to gank in the early game for a Gragas with a Syndra to back him up as well. Very interesting start here. It's all about the extended leash because the turrets actually aggro down the blue buff while they take down walls. Will they get the entire camp before they turn onto it? Looks like they will. Looks like there's going to be a very early level three for Yankos. That feels so good as a jungler, just having that much help coming out from your bot lane, of course. This is one of the few champions that can set you up like that, but he's in a great spot. And it's just very key against a super fast jungler in Talia that you get a head start here as the Gragas. Your goal again is to get your boots so you can activate Predator. Wonder trades very early on here with Keen, obviously using Camille and her level one. Comet on his side as well, just again to have a bit more lane power. It's going to be a super fast level three. Just a super fast jungle clear here for the side of G2, the sort of thing that was unscouted completely by Afrika, who had the much more shallow wards of spotting the Scuttle Crab information. On side level two is a hit. It looks like Wadid has to get himself back to the safety of Kjarn in there. It does take about half his health bar and damage just from the quick combo that comes out from Afrika. So many incidental nerfs to the Rakan over time means very, very squishy in lane, as we know, but will be just fine. In that regard, Yankos walking up, seeing Spirit, he needs this blue buff, still level two. So I want to give some credit here to Afrika, and something I think the viewers really should follow when they play. Their vision is super, super good, especially in the early game. While they didn't have the deep ward to spot the leash here, the river was just set up perfectly to actually spot Yankos, so they knew, okay, he's coming from bot side, he's going through mid, he's going to be top side now, and Spirit could kind of play around it. Now, of course, Yankos got out of vision a little bit. Spirit might actually have to flash out if... I know, he's fine. 
Vera does manage to secure that crop and get himself away in time, but Yankos will have a nice two scuttle crab start to start off his game. Exactly. The power farm there that the Heimerdinger provided allowed him to get the two scuttle lead, and you can just say, experience lead for a Predator jungle before Predator. We might see 2v2s here. It's being shadowed by Talia. Spirit predicts that this is going to be the fight as Yankos turns onto him now. Wonder's going to be taken very low. Spirit as well. Yankos now still the target of the aggro here from a freak of freaks. They're going to be taking him very low at first blood goes over to them. And this is a play here where Spirit is actually looking like he wants to recall after taking the Grom, but then he knows, oh wait, Yankos can go top here and set up an early gank, so he follows him and moves in through the laning phase, and then he actually managed to surprise G2. And you just saw the communication and synergy between Spirit and Keen, seen leagues above Wanda and Yankos when it comes to the skirmish. We're gonna get the replay here. If you watch the start of the play, the immediate damage goes to what he has to back away, and then it ends up being two targets hitting Yankos, and the there's just no ability for him to fully disengage on this play. But I actually think right here, if Gigi were ready, they could have, instead of going for Scion with the hook from Wonder, they could have flashed with him straight onto Spirit when the body slam came in as well. But the problem is that Talia's out of vision. It's not an electric Gragas. In the end, I agree with you with full information. They didn't have it and end up looking a bit silly. Hindsight is always 2020. You can look back and say, oh, if we did this, it would have been great. But in the moment, it's hard to make that call. And the difficulty of the situation ends up meaning that the Afrika Freaks play it better. They have the coordination and the communication to make the play as Spirit will now look to make something happen in the bottom side. The Rockets went into the bush, but did away. not hit Spirit, who was right on the cusp of showing himself going front through that brush on the bot side. So they did not know for sure that he was there. In the end, just playing defensive and wave clearing in lane relieves the pressure from the G2 bot. You get that really rough start as a player where your first gank fails and you also end up flashing while still dying. So yeah. everything actually just went wrong for Yankos up in the top lane. Wonder, while he is ahead in CS now, would really have loved to pick up either an early kill or force a flash away from Keen, but didn't happen. Spirit, great start from him. And he really is one of the junglers everyone will be looking at in this tournament and saying he could actually end up being one of the most important players out of anyone. And especially getting that top lane going seems so important for both teams in this game because stylistically, both of these teams like to have their top laner in a spot where he can do that split push game. Afrika, known to play the 4-1 game with Keen on the split push. G2 has played a 1-3-1 many a times in the past, and if your top laner falls too far behind, that could be a big issue for either squad. But the fun thing about Afrika Freaks is when the playoffs hit, they were facing a lot of teams that wanted to play 1-3-1. In Korea, it felt unbeatable on 8-15 to deal with the Rise, Nar, Dras, Ash, Tom, Kench in the mid lane, wave clearing and making play. Plays, and it was Afrika that took down first Gen G and then also Kingzone Dragon X playing 4 1. This is kind of a different kind of 4 1 here. They still have very good Baron set up, good poke on the team, but it's a team fight tank from Keen rather than something like a split pusher. It's just a different identity. I expect here Afrika to make some strong Baron plays as the game goes on. And as we talked about earlier, the early lane, it's not going to be especially difficult on Keen once he has a couple of items to just sit in this lane and be just fine. You can see that the gank that he got earlier, along with the assist money under his belt, means he's got the bomby cinder. He's just hanging out, shoving the wave in, doing just fine here for himself, as now he and Spirit will both rotate down through this top river, potentially towards the mid lane, but there's not a lot to make happen here just yet. Earl gets a little bit of damage, but that bubble's not going to cause any sleepy trouble just yet. And Perks is back underneath the safety of the mid lane turret as we do approach the seven minute mark. Looks like nobody's really looking for anything too much just yet. Still no level six potential on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, no one is getting a huge lead yet, but still the first play was very, very important for Afrika. Wonder not getting further ahead on top side. Meanwhile, mid lane, Perks is actually doing very well against the Zori. And we're going to see this blind pick syndrome quite a lot during the tournament. His laning space is super solid. Very few picks can actually like shot her down 1v1. So it's mainly about setting up plays with your jungler to, to beat her. And that's why you see the blank bands. But Perks is doing very well for his team. And that is important because again, I think during play-ins, he was actually not the star player on G2. It was all about Wonder. And they need this guy to perform. And thus, if Wonder had actually gotten ahead in the first gank and we had Perks just incrementally in a pressure advantage in a good laning matchup for the Syndra, then things would start to capitulate on the side of a freak. They would really have to go into their shells. But we're seeing very happy forward waypoint from Keen working on a Sunfire Cape here. It's going to take a lot longer into this game. I'm thinking probably two, two and a half items for that to be threat onto the Scion. 
And while Kuro is having to play defensive and itemize defensively, he's just happy that he's going to go about as 50-50 in the lane as possible. Right, he is falling behind in terms of the farm, about 20 CS down compared to his lane opponent. He'll bandage that up a little bit because he has some extra minions to go for here. His bottom side, who did get himself away there. Nice dash to get out of the range of Tucson's combo as both sides bottom lane breaking very even in terms of that farm. And you can see the Kaisa here, pickaxe, daggers in the inventory, still working on building up, scaling up. And that's the name of the game for this champion. Get through the early game, survive the pressure yep. from the Heimerdinger, scale the lane. Yeah, it's not really about Kramer at this point in the game here. It's honestly a lot more about what can Perks and Wonder do. Can they get further ahead? Can Perks use this advantage to either get a kill against Koro, maybe with Yangos, or will he start roaming? and use the push he gets to then set up either a play on bottom side to secure the turret or get Wonder a kill top lane. It's kind of what's needed for G2 if they really want to play split push. Otherwise, with Alistar's Scion, there's enough engage on the Freaker side to this group as five and see, oh, Wonder's in a side lane. Let's go ham mid and you get your team fight. Square up the game. You try to make it this pseudo ARAM. You throw out trouble bubbles and G2 don't really have a frontliner that can eat them happily. It's going to be AP first item on the Gragas. The meta right now for Gragas jungle is to ditch the tank and go pretty much two, three AP items most yeah. of the time. So everyone here to some degree is susceptible to what we're going to see from the Talia and the Zoe at one item. But speaking of one items, you stand too long in that Heimerdinger turret the moment that Ludens is done and Nasty things can happen as well and it might have to be something like a banshee veil from kuro so he just doesn't get one combo to buy perks in the middle and remember if you try to make a play onto the heimerdinger and you're underestimating exactly what you can do it's very easy for those to be turned around as well so i'm looking for a lot of coordination not excessive amounts of risk coming out from afrika when looking towards that bottom side but into the mid lane kuro finds a little bit of damage there doesn't necessarily proc a bunch of the bonus there from the auto attack on the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Freak Freak's two men here do not know they're spotted. Very shallow ward right onto this Raptor Brush, but it's gonna be a vision mission. Deedle back away. All about map control, slow game so far. And we just talked about the potential to roam top lane for Perks. He is hovering towards the side. Yankus is here as well. It could be a tower dive. If King can all the way, he will be fine. And he's Still in a good spot now. Ah, just a few more seconds. He just walked away. Basically the same. And also, it is trying to turret dive a Scion building full tank. So they think right. better of that one. Not enough oomph for Wunder, just the Tiamat to try to push in this lane. Stay back away, and we're playing at LCK pace here, guys. So just, you know, stay Slow and steady. Watch your posture. Might yeah. be standing here for a while. We've got to enjoy <laughs> this one. But it's all building towards what will be, I imagine, a pivotal mid-game fight when we see one-item completions on both sides. This is one of those games because of the slow pace and the slower nature of it, that once you do get that bigger fight between four or five people at once, it'll likely dictate some tempo for a long time because whoever does find that first advantage, it's going to mean so much. Whatever they decide to fight for, whether it be a Drake, whether it be a Rift Herald, the first Drake this time around, a Mountain, which honestly isn't gonna do a lot early on in the game. You stack up a couple of them, it can help you take Barons, but it's not something people will typically throw themselves at. But if you ask me who's most happy to wait a while and get some cool items to show their friends, it's kind of two answers here. The Kai'Sa certainly is the most obvious benefactor. Might just get to go full AP build, which is a little bit slower in the early game. No Storm Razor here, you'll notice it is Rage Blade first, which does yeah. usually integrate the ability power build, but you're not hamstrung to that. So you look at Kai'Sa and say, ah, but then Kai'Sa hits three, four items. We know about the threat of that. However, on the side of G2, Wonder gets enough items, and it doesn't matter how tanky Scion is. The true damage on the second half, the persistent protocol, will really set up some swift push as well. So neither team is counting themselves out if it suddenly reads 40,000 gold on both sides and a much larger time. I mean, definitely agree. Also because Camille is one of those split pushers who can really finish the game in the side. Turret lane. threat. Yes. Exactly. Like with a Q, with the fact that you're going to get Sheen procs, like you can destroy turrets so quickly. And that's actually something a lot of split pushers are missing. They get the advantage to get a couple of turrets and then they have to start joining the team. For team fights, Camille doesn't need to do that, but she can if she wants to. She can use that to lock down Kramer as well. So he can't move around too much. We'll do it and see what happens for now. It is, as we expected in the bottom lane, just a lot of farming and pushing from the Heimerdinger. But Spirit is back. This is gank number two on bottom side. Hoping to get them, but remember the stopwatch is available. You don't want to get baited too much against the Heimerdinger. 
so much shadowing up this bottom lane by both sides. Perks is now going to be spotted, making a rotation down towards this bottom lane as well. We've seen Yankos hanging around here the entire time too, but it looks like neither side is going to get their opportunity to pull that trigger just yet. Both teams playing incredibly respectfully, not stepping too far forward until now as Spirit makes his entrance onto the Weaver's Wall. Kjarnan's looking to find the damage in return, going to be taking Spirit down to about half HP. Kramer also going to be taking low here. TP's coming in, looking to use that and find the advantage. Tucson's knocked up into the air. Harden keeping himself alive for now. Decimating Smash comes in, but Keen's not going to find a whole lot of anything. And G2 will disengage the play. Oh, he's dancing his way out of it. Four players bottom lane from Afrika. TP used, that means Wanda will get top lane turret for himself. Right here, we saw Jan and Bellis take any damage because they wanted to kill his massive turret first, and then he just flashes out. Let's see if the minion wave catches up because Keen can just ult to lane. There's no sheen, I wonder, so the, tu the turret take is a bit slower. He certainly will more to the wound this top lane turret. Yeah, he could just now recall instead of actually getting more damage on it, go back, spend all his gold, return to the top lane without having to use TP, and that will suddenly be available if another play should happen on the bottom side later here. See what he decides to do for now. You might as well just walk back. No reason to TP. And if you wonder now, okay, what do I make of this? There was a lot of action, but it was inaction overall in terms of the scoreboard. Right. It is a very low turret. If you ever leave that lane again or get a successful gank, turret is going down. However, the one cost for G2 is now you can't just be as wanton about overextending as the Heimerdinger in bot side, so maybe you get more breathing room for the Kaiser to push towards two items. I agree with the flash being on cooldown, but stopwatch is still available. And the thing about Heimerdinger with stopwatch is he buys so much time when you try and gank him because of it, and he will get one or two members low, so if G2 can react with a TP coming from Wonder, you can actually turn around these ganks. So I think a freak needs to be very careful if they actually want to go for a repeat in the bottom lane. Like G2 is again looking towards the bottom lane, maybe for a second here with Yankos. But Heimerdinger is one of those champions. So much of the champion's damage output is through his little adds, his turrets. It's not him himself. So when he goes into the stasis, there's still so much DPS coming out. It's so dangerous if you can't make that happen instantly with a CC chain. As taking a look back at mid lane, Kuro farming up these minions doesn't have a fully completed item here yet on the Zoe. But bottom side of the map, it looks like Spirit may be looking to set up with yet another Weaver's Wall. As you can see, Yankos shadowing this bottom side yet again. Spirit's ultimate still not off cooldown just yet. They'll need to buy a little bit more time before that one can go off as the Trouble Bubbles will keep perks from roaming towards that bottom side again. While there's no true gold lead in this game, there is nice CS advantages in almost every role. The side of G2, Yankos going to be spotted on bot side. Seems like both teams expecting a play around the bot lane. I think Afrika are still just going to be mostly happy about farming this one out. Obviously, you'd love to squish that Heimerdinger, work out some of your frustrations, and take him down. <laughs> but just farming it out, just continuing to get that second arm, even just get the Hypercharger Evolve onto the Kaiser, be just fine for the side of Afrika. Yeah, and while Tito can wait for that, getting the top lane turret for Wanda should really be one of the main goals for them now that it's already fairly low. Perks gets some decent damage mid, but Wonder is starting to get some items on his side. We know a two-item power spike. Once you have, you know, your upgraded team at Trinity Force is ready. Camille will be a monster. But at this point, they are getting him that gold from the first turret that is already down to about 40% HP. Should really be a fairly easy setup for G2 Esports. Meanwhile, we see Afrika continue the focus on bottom side. One thing we'll notice, you talked and complimented Afrika's vision earlier right now. Pretty shallow vision from the side of G2. They don't really have the sort of information to look for a turret dive or even to zone away the Scion top side and take that turret. So that standing gold goes begging. Around the bot side, Spirit clearing some vision as well. And for any play he can make here, and I get a couple of autos here, but I don't think turret destruction is going to happen in the bot lane just yet. Not anytime soon, at least. But the gold between these two teams, gentlemen, 26.3 to 26.4 thousand gold, could not be much closer as we just crest the 17 minute mark. Still only that first kill on the board for the Afrika Freaks. No neutral objectives taken down Here yet. Here we go. Rift Herald and Drake still alive. But the play could come in top lane. Wonder putting some damage down on Takin. Yankos making his way towards the top side, but he won't be there in time to set up anything further, and Keen goes back to base. And Keen can again just ult to the lane if he wants to. 
Uh, obviously, Yankos can wait around to see if he actually will do it and set up a potential play on the turret here. It is still risky because Sign is very, very tanky at this point, and the Gragas damage will not do too much. But because of this, notice what Keen is doing. He gives up the top sides. It's too safe for me to go there with no defensive control. And he's looking to actually make a proactive play, kind of a lane swap play from the actual single members. Here are three members, but. Oh, big Whoa. one means that they won't be able to protect the turret immediately. Instead, they're gonna go in with what did, looking to find the Wombo combo. Spirit's knocked up into the air. Afrika looking to disengage this one now as Keen comes in from behind. Makes his entrance just in case G2 continue to pressure this one up. Decimating Smash comes down. Not gonna find its way onto the Heimer Dinger there. It's four men bottom for G2. Four men bottom for Afrika as well. Who's gonna I decide to go in here? Top lane here by the Heimer Dinger to get the turret. Camille came but I thought that was gonna thwart this play, but first turret blood should go to G2. G2 managed to collect that one just in time. And it killed the wave. gonna be cleared out bottom side, which means Afrika cannot immediately respond. Yeah, Wonder didn't know if Keen would return top lane or go bot lane, so he didn't stay to just kill the turret instantly. He recalled, got an item, and were ready to TP down bot if a big tower dive would happen. He ends up TPing down, they kill the minion wave, turret is still alive, and they get first turret top. But it's the next level, next level, because of the Heimannigger. First clears the wave, then he himself has the teleport without even shopping to go top side. Doesn't matter that Wunder had a defensive teleport. Yannan's ended up being an aggressive <laughs> one, and it's not a trade, it's just a freebie for the side of G2. Yeah, the only little negative for them is the fact that it's not Wunder getting all that gold for himself, so he gets faster to two items, but you know what? You're gonna take that first turret. You stop the bot end from going down, and Wunder can just continue farming on the other side of the map. Meanwhile, around mid lane, Perks had to use Plenty. He's still pretty far up in CS, but he's not been able to use it yet to go and impact the game. Good macro play from G2 over that exchange, getting themselves a single turret lead. First and only objective of this game at the 19 and a half minute mark. Kramer back down in this bottom side. Now you can see continuing along that AP build. Nashor's Tooth will be coming out next. Now that the Berserker's Greaves are done, he'll continue scaling up. And you can see over on the side of Hjarnan, I really like the fact that if you look at the inventory, he's going for the Hourglass second. A lot of times I see Heimerdinger's not go for that immediately, instead opting into just more strict AP. But this gives you so much outplay potential and so many defensive options. Yeah, and we also know the way a Kai'Sa wants to play, she tends to dive into the back line with her team. Well, that's where the Hourglass is going to be so impactful because you actually have a way to defend yourself when she jumps at you. You will have your turrets to do a lot of the work around you as well. But Afrika got that bot lane turret eventually. All G2 actually managed to do was just kind of slow them down a bit. But the game is very, very even. 20 minutes in, no one is really too far ahead either lane either. And selfishly, I'm really excited about the game state we're seeing because in Korea, at the LCK le level over seven years, there have been two Heimerdinger games, both of them defeats, and now we're gonna get a late game Heimerdinger in a game with no asterisk, a very even game. Yes. And I'm ready to see, does Afrika Freaks have the experience about playing around that very nuance, that very specific style of the Heimerdinger in a late game fight. Yeah, here's what we're going to see from G2. They will get push mid with Heimer and Syndra, and then they will control Baron and use Heimer turret, yep. constantly threaten it. And if you show up, you'll get a massive grenade in your face. Here we go mid. Perks is gonna be drowsy, but the damage comes in from G2 and Hjornan picks up Kuro. That's the kind of play G2 needs to make. And it's a nice proactive play. They push the vision up so they can see the entrances. That was a sort of area where Keen dropped from a tower and went bot lane, didn't want to play around the uncertainty. G2, find Kuro, kill Kuro, and get another kill. Yet another thing going the way of G2 Esports as they get themselves that kill, their first one of the game. Let's see how they set it up. Yeah, the vision was on bottom side. You don't know what's going to happen. And there's so much CC. It's actually four champions that can lock you down and then kill you right after. Great play from G2 Esports. What a nice first game for them here doing group stages after the play-ins where, again, a lot of people were looking at them, kind of criticizing some of the sloppiness. They talked about it themselves as well. And then you get to play the Korean second seed in your first game in group stages, and you have this kind of game. Feels really good for G2 Esports. It's always a tough situation when you go up against one of those teams that people look at as, hey, this is one of the teams that can go a long way in this tournament, and you've got to play against them your very first match. You can't let that get in your head too much, especially if play-ins weren't exactly what you wanted. And G2 seems to not be rattled whatsoever here in this game. Looking to take down this tier one in mid. Should be able to do so. They're zoning away Kramer, very short range. That is going to be two outer turrets down. Looking forward, I think G2 need to keep up this play style. 
of a couple of people invade. Vision, put down the deep vision and focus on an objective because Kramer has gone unhindered. He has the national studio, he has the AP build. Front to back team fight doesn't look good as Perks. Is he caught? Perks gets himself away from the pulverized after the headbutt, flashes over the wall. He'll be safe unless the killer instinct comes in. Perks still alive. But that was like the perfect play from Perks. During the headbutt animation from the Alistar, he managed to knock him back so Tucson can't actually combo him with the Q and force an early flash from Perks. So Perks gets to then follow and walk away from him and then flash a wall to stay alive. And there was also a pretty big mistake on the side of Afrika. Negative synergy of the TP coming in with Scion and the Weaver's Wall keeping him away from the Syndra there. So a bit of a mistake on execution as third turret goes down. Wonder putting enough damage into that one. Trinity Force completed means he shreds those turrets like you guys were talking about earlier as Kramer makes his way down to the bottom side now. Two versus one is not a situation Wonder's gonna get out of anytime soon. Flash over the wall from Kramer. From Kramer to seal the deal. Ends up walking up the river, finding Kramer, and if there's one player you don't want to give the kill to, it's him, it's here, I'm in mid lane, what did's able to find the knockup. Kuro's in some trouble, gonna be taken down very low from the Ignite. The cast takes him out, and Yankos will find his first kill of the game. Kuro's just walking up too far, gets caught a second time a couple of minutes later. Feels so good to trade a kill after they invested a lot, including their 80 carries flash. Pick up that kill, bot side. Bot side control does not yield anything like a Drake right now. So I think it can only push through mid. G2 have four here, though. G2 looking to see if they can find themselves another kill. Perks able to land some CC down on Akeen. That is the enemy frontliner, but is he tanky enough to survive? This many G2 players has to flash away. A sloppy play here from Keen, staying in the mid lane, pushing up, not respecting the fact that G2 could show up from the side. This is bot lane play here. If one of just continues walking up the lane, he might delay at least the play, but he knows Keen can then ult after him. And that's why he tried to walk up the river, just so he can actually flash the wall. Sadly for him, he will go down, but then mid lane. Yeah, the Ace of Predator replay moves forward to the mid lane here. Tucson, I thought, was the one that was going to go down at the start. Seems to have his blushes spared by Kuro, but the captain, he thinks he's done enough. He thinks he's away. Biancos, plenty of AP on the barrel. Easy kill. We're still now kind of waiting for this Baron setup. g have done everything they needed to do with the outer turrets. They can push mid lane. I hence a butt in the center. <laughs> well, uh, it's not always been the cleanest Baron setups from G2 if we look at their performance in the EU LCS. And it's where a lot of times you see Western teams actually struggle against Korean teams when you have to then execute perfectly around the big objective with your goal lead. Because if you make a mistake, there's a high chance you lose the fight. But it's very forgiving, as you already mentioned, with the Heimerdinger. Put down some small turret, thing. put down a super turret. You can play fun games with Leash. And as Afrika, you need to be assertive. You can't just sit back, because you won't, shouldn't be surprised if you end up losing the Baron. And I also want to comment right now on G2's itemization. Notice very defensive items coming out from this team. Adaptive Helm, second item on the side of the Gragas. Not going for that AP Bruisery style. No Hourglass as item number two. Banshee's Veil, second completed item there onto perks as opposed to something like sorcerer shoes into an oblivion orb and the hourglass now completed but look at day. this game state keen doesn't want to be in lane against wonder he'll soon have two items out trade him and take turrets he's also the face checker tucson's alone is not enough to try to contest vision around the baron so it's going to be this dosi do of how many members can we send bot lane bot lane and not lose baron or how much spit pushing can one do? Here we go. Start number one. You got the turrets down. Yankos is tanking. They're waiting to see who's going to face check. We know there's a ton of engage and CC and G2. They're spotted now. The blue trinket does spot them, but they're staying on the Baron here. No, they're not. Only the, the turrets. turrets. Only the turrets. They can't stop even if they wanted to. Poor little minion brain turrets. As a little bit of damage comes over the wall onto Tucson. Rockets follow after him, a barrel for good measure. They'll take him below half. The dream here is to get Tucson's ultimate because then when Sion is bot lane, they can never face check and thus the Baron is so likely to go down. Here out of the vision though, we're seeing Tucson recall. What did is on the prowl. What did hanging out to the side there just in case they need to flank, but the Drake is up. And much earlier in the game, we've actually mentioned this twice now, we, we praised their Freaka vision setup and how normally in the LCK they are so good at spotting where the enemy wants to be. This game now, they're actually struggling getting control of the map because you do have push with Wonder, they have push in mid with the Heimer and Syndra, they're getting all that river control. We see a bit of the vision go back towards Freaka now, and they need it so badly because when you start face checking into the river, a buffed up Heimer grenade, will fly over a wall and just stun you, and you're going to die because three people will jump right after the grenade and kill you. 
Very much just gonna back away on the top side. Again, we don't have the Heimerdingers in the LCK, and he does warp the game just like Vladimir meant that your bot laner could start initiating team fights at two items at Yasuo. We know all about how pesky he can be. So just because the game state is not a normal one, even with their fame of doing three to four scrim blocks a day and practicing as much as Afrika has really renounced, how much practice did they do with the damn Heimerdinger in the game? Well, you call them, you know, the team that always comes in prepared. They, they are always good in a pick and ban phase, or at least they want to try and be a bit innovative and then try and outsmart you. Heimerdinger is not a surprise. No. From D2 Esports. You was, know Kjorn had placed it. It was banned in almost every single game. They read every in. other piece of paper from <laughs> They missed one <laughs> thing. Was Why one are you thing. getting at them? I'm just saying, if Jan and Insub carrying this game, like he's actually doing really well so far, but if he ends up winning this game for G2 Esports, people will question in a best of one, leaving Heimer open. But are we basically hands in mouths until we see the Baron die for Yes, G2? we need to see Pretty the much. Baron die for. We have to see the plan actually work. Everything up until then is going to be speculation. And how many Kitu. items will Kaisa have by then? As Afrika just say, screw that, we're gonna start him Well, out. Kaisa is very adept at taking down Baron herself. So much damage comes out of that passive. As you are gonna see Wonder hanging out in that bottom side, taking down the tier two turret as the rest of G2 needs to keep pushing. will move into position and try to stop them. Baron is below half HP, Wonder continuing to push. What is the choice here for the side of Afrika? They're deciding to commit to the fight as Perks will keep Kuro away from the rest of the members of his Afrika, team. Afrika, what Wonder are you doing? Still putting in work on the enemy base. Spirit's gonna be taken down to half HP. Stun coming in from the grenade. Spirit is deleted. Yankos finds the kill credit for himself as the bottom lane, lane inhibitor will be absolutely wrecked. G2 showed so much resolve to keep going and Afrika says, wait, you're supposed to TP. You're supposed to come here and stop this play. They keep the spit push going. They even get the kill. G2 get everything. They're going towards Baron now with Deed is actually sitting around the corner here hoping someone moves in to stop them. Baron is started but G2 are backing away for now. Ult is still available for Perks and Wonder is on his way. He's almost there. Wonder gets to this fight and can manage to collapse. G2 may be able to make a play out of it. Now going on to Kramer, able to knock him up with that with did ultimate, seeing if they can find anything else here. Chusen into the ulti there on the Alistair. More damage coming into him now, but still being protected by the damage reduction. Wonder comes over the wall, more damage going into Chusen. The ult has found him as Wonder will now disengage from the rest of Afrika. And right now, Afrika, they're panicking. They're all over the place. The moment they start Baron, you have two options. Either you stay on the Baron and you finish it, so G2 have to walk into you, or you use your Alistair sign together to force a guaranteed engage. But it was only Keen that altered towards G2. Everyone else was kind of running away. And G2's communication has impressed me so far this game. Outside of that first 2v2, where they didn't quite have things where they wanted them between Wonder and Yankos, the bottom lane play to get the first turret. Then the dance around Baron to get the bottom lane inhibitor. Now the play in the jungle to secure that kill. This looks like a team that has a plan, and everyone is on the same page. And we highlighted multiple times the ability for Camille to just shut down everything in a side lane and take down your turrets. And that's why Wonder can stay bot lane, not look to TP in, and just take down so many things if you hesitate around Baron. Seeing that Rico will channel here for the Kaisa. This game is dominated for me for what Afrika can't do. They can't contest the Camille in the side lane. They can't finish the Baron because they're so afraid of the poke. And G2 are back it's on gone. that Baron, and Afrika can't face check. If we could go anywhere near this, they might be in for a very nasty surprise. G2 wards all through the top side of the Afrika jungle now, making sure they're aware. Spirit. If Afrika gets still close to this, Spirit gets close, but it's not close enough. Banshee's Veil still up, not going to be popped by the rockets. Orb goes flying through, still not going to hit it either, but that's Baron for G2. And it's some great League of Legends right now from G2 Esports. Beautiful setup with the Heimerdinger. We've already seen them try and start the Baron and be ready to turn and fight. This time, Afrika was too far away to do anything. They've already lost the initial team fight, and now we have Baron buff for G2 Esports. And this G2 Esports doesn't look like a team that had to play through play in so far. This looks like a team that completely ah. has everything together. They look like a team who used it to practice, to get right. ready. Fair enough. World. This looks like Tried a team some who made things. their practice count. This doesn't look like a team who people were saying, oh, it's going to be a struggle. They don't look like they're in world shape because they look damn in shape right and now. And Freaks look like a team that are coming in cold, that haven't played since the semifinals of the LCK, the better part of two months ago. They aren't ready and equipped for the Heimerdinger. All they can really say is, we still have Kramer, 
on his way to a death cap and on his way to a strong 5v5 fight. I don't see too many 5v5 fights in the future. The wall blocks off Perks and Yankos, but honestly, what is it blocking them away from? Afrika can't make any sort of a collapse happen because the Hjarnan pressure on the Heimerdinger will claim yet another turret here in the mid lane. Best professional Heimerdinger in the world. I think it's a fair statement. I think that All is right. definitely a fair statement I'll to give make. You that. Still undefeated on, I think his KDA is like 79 or something completely That's a, insane. That's a third number. With this champion here. And it's not even about the kills he's picking up. It's just the amount of pressure he's constantly applying with it. And then the Baron setups that you can pull off with Heimer specifically. And G2 Esports now have bought Inip down. Top Inip turret is almost dead. And mid Inip is already taking damage. And remember, once all three inhibitors are gone, your game pretty much just becomes the base. And that's it. Leaving is pretty much impossible. You can't contest anything on the map. And G2 is looking to make that a sad reality for the Afrika Freaks as they'll try their hardest to dig in and defend this last remaining inhibitor turret. Cannon Minion would have needed one more shot to take that one down as Sharnan drops down the big boy turret to make things happen there in the mid lane. Inhib, Perks walks up. Tries to get the cheeky single auto attack, but back door, back door bonus can be a bit of a pain sometimes. Leaves it alive with 20 HP. So frustrating here for the Afrika Freaks because they really have had no ability to control their fate since about 15 minutes ago in this game. So much darkness on the map. But G2 to exploit and play a very smart rotational game around those bigger objectives. How about an Infernal? feel even better about the game state. Look at the gold lead, it's over 7,000. Yeah, and if we go back to the early game, Afrika kind of jumped into that Heimerdinger trap we see where you try and gank him in the early game, you try and get the early kills against him, but they failed to do it. So they didn't get down an early turret, they didn't stop him from pushing, and they lost top turret, then they lost another one in the bottom lane, and suddenly G2 had actually taken over the map. And suddenly things like the fact that there's a 1-0-0 Kai'Sa close to flame horizoning a Heimerdinger seems to mean so little. All these items are here. The dream is almost online with the death cap coming in pre-35 minutes, and yet it doesn't feel like that power can ever be wielded by Afrika Freaks. You can only have so much gold that's actually useful in the game of League of Legends. Who cares if you're flame horizoning the guy if he's got five out of six items already completed and they've got eight turrets on the side of G2. That's so much extra money in the pockets of everyone on this team. Steric's gauge plus a stopwatch in the inventory of Wonder means if a big fight breaks out and he's there, he can dive with absolute impunity into this back line. Now, we still have at least one big team fight left in this game here for yes, Afrika to pull off. They have the Alistar to try and start that fight, and they have Kramer with items to try and win it. Here we go, they might try and set up for it now. Wall comes through, Keen's going in, looking to find the initiation. Down now, onto G2. Damage goes through, but it Look looks like a Freak's base is in some trouble. Yanko's getting himself away off the side. Tucson gonna be going into the ulti, keeping himself alive. Turret falls at the Nexus. Afrika, you've got to answer. Kramer's nearly gonna be taken down. Take a drink. Yanko's goes on a killing spree. As Wonders into the back line, trying to finish everyone else. Tucson is low. Wonders still gonna be kept alive. Dashes back. Pearl barely escapes. Keen's nearly gonna be taken down, tries to get the slam, but he digs his own grave instead. G2 Esports on the Nexus turret now again. They'll take it down, and the Nexus stands exposed. Heimerding is still alive, perks out of mana, but look at this, TP coming in from Wonder. He wants to finish the game right now. Don't claim it 30 seconds. I think G2 can do this. Tucson trying to defend as much as he can, but Nexus under fire. The big turret will do the work, and G2 will take down the Afrika Freaks. What a game one from G2 Esports in the group stage. They get the Heimerdinger for Janen in the bottom lane. Afrika, they can't shut him down. Turrets start dropping. Wonder gets fed under Camille, and the map is gone. And Afrika Freaks read pages 2 to 40 of the prep document on G2. How did they miss page 1 with the Heimerdinger on it? They just did not have an answer. First LCK team that has ever lost to a Heimerdinger requires an international event. We see the best in the world, and he makes it look pretty clean, as we never really saw that Titanic 5v5. The Camille warped it and continued a split push. We talk so much about the top lane and the jungle in this matchup. We talked about the mid lane. The bottom lane was almost on the back burner, especially early on. But that Heimerdinger pick from Jarn, and this is a guy who has been criticized before as being the one who doesn't step up enough for G2. The Heimerdinger now has some big shoes to fill for everyone else, saying get